Hi friends, welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. My name is Caitlin and we are in my garden today. I have the entire garden planted out and I was laying in bed the other night and I realized that I didn't plant my sweet potatoes. Not only did I not plant my sweet potatoes, but I didn't leave any space in this garden for sweet potatoes. So I'm going to give you a very, very quick tour to kind of show you that I don't have any space for sweet potatoes, but I came up with a plan. So. I love growing sweet potatoes. Um, I started my own slips last year and I started them this year. And honestly, I started my slips about three months ago. So they should have been well ready to go right now. And they are not. I probably do have a couple that I could throw in the ground right now. But my potatoes have just started growing slips. I don't know why they took so long. I don't know why I struggled this year. So I did have to buy my sweet potato slips. But let's do a quick tour of the garden to kind of show you where I thought I was going to put the sweet potatoes and then what I'm going to do instead. So it is not too late to plant sweet potatoes. It is actually right now the perfect time. It is Memorial Day weekend and um, sweet, pot sweet potatoes are incredibly frost tender, which means one light frost will kill them all. So I really wait until... Um, about the end of May to really get my sweet potatoes in the ground and with sweet potatoes they do need a 120 day growing season and unfortunately I don't have that so it's the end of May right now my first frost is only about the beginning of October so I think I counted 30 60 90 they may get about 20 90 to 110 days before they get harvested probably more around the 90 day mark um so my sweet potatoes always come out a little bit smaller than what they maybe could be, but I just don't have, I'm not in a long enough growing season, especially because I can't get them out any sooner than now. It's only been above 45 for the last maybe two weeks. It's gotten to about 42, about a week, week and a half ago. And for sweet potatoes, for the work and the investment of the sweet potatoes, I'm just not taking that chance. Um, I wait until we're at least above the 50s. So this is my potato row and i grew um, i think i grew 12 pounds where i bought 12 pounds of sea potatoes and i severely underestimated <laughs> how many potatoes that was going to be in case you missed it i did do a video where i chitted my potatoes so chitted means you have a potato it grows an eye and you cut it grows an eye like maybe two eyes on that potato you cut the potato in half so each piece has an eye so i chit my potatoes to get more potatoes. Now with potatoes, there's a lot of questions. Um, does chitin actually give you more potatoes? Does it give you bigger or smaller potatoes than if you just leave them whole? There's a lot of questions. I prefer chitin the potatoes. So I did. <laughs> I am somebody that likes to save money. I like to make my bucks go the furthest. So I like to chit potatoes because I feel like it makes it go farther, the potato investment go farther. So once I got done chitting my potatoes, I had this entire row planted with potatoes. And at the time, I'm like, oh, that's great. But I forgot <laughs> this row was supposed to be potatoes and sweet potatoes. So that is unfortunate. But um, I'm really, really excited with the number of potatoes that are coming up here. Um, Almost all of the potatoes I think I put in the ground are coming up. So I think that's really, really exciting. Um, but So we just need to find a plan B for our sweet potatoes. So up here I have the bean fence. None of my beans have started coming up yet, but I do need to water them. They are a little dry. Um, and I do have this path here. I thought about putting in the sweet potatoes. Um, but I'm really just here trying to be more organized and trying to have a more... Um, organized garden i think last year last year my goal with my garden was i wanted to plant every single available space i wanted to make use of all the space and i did last year last year i did not have a single hole a single spot in my garden that didn't have something in it and i do think that this year i've done the exact same thing i've planted everything i don't think i have too many well i don't i don't have too many holes um however i'm trying to keep the paths and I'm trying to keep it more organized. Last year, having all that stuff in the garden, it looked great. Well, it produced great, but it didn't really necessarily look the greatest. And that really kind of bummed me out because the garden I do think is so pretty. And I want both a creative garden, but I also want an orderly garden. So I don't want to plant in that path. And then here I do have a nice path. Um, but over here I have my peppers. And then my tomatoes start right here. 
So again, I didn't really want to plant in my path. If we do a quick scan of the garden, we have our broccoli and our cabbage. We have our paths. I don't want to plant in the path. And I have everything else planted out. I really don't have any space to throw any sweet potatoes. Now, I did do some research to see if maybe I could plant the sweet potatoes like at the base of the peppers and do like a companion planting thing. And while companion planting is a 100% a great idea, it's a great way to save space, it's a great way to maximize your space, I didn't see anything that said that peppers and sweet potatoes could be grown together. Now, honestly, you can do whatever you want. You can 100%, if I really wanted to, 100% plant those sweet potatoes with those peppers if that's all the space that you have. The issue is with some things, so with the peppers and sweet potatoes, I had the slight concern that maybe some of that pepper heat might or some of that pepper flavor might translate to the sweet potatoes. I don't honestly know if that's a thing or not. Um, but I just that's, that was kind of what made me decide I didn't want to do it. But a lot of the things that you don't want a companion plant together, you don't want a companion plant because of the bugs it draws in. So there are certain things that you don't put together because one attracts a certain type of event or a certain type of disease that will kill the other one. However, companion planting is a great thing to do. Um, tomatoes love to have carrots and basil planted in with them. Um, I know marigolds like to go with a lot of different things, but I don't honestly know all of the, off the top of my head, all the different things you can companion plant. Um, I do know what I tried two years ago that I wasn't hugely, hugely successful at is one of the most famous companion planting is the three sisters. It's the corn, the beans, and the squash. And that is something that the Aztecs did. And um, maybe the Mayans you plant the corn and then the corn grows, the beans will grow off the corn and the squash kind of grows in between the corn. And so that is a great companion plant really sure that works really well. I tried that and my beans, I don't, maybe I just didn't water them enough. My beans didn't really kind of take hold of the corn. They didn't really do what I wanted them to do, but that is a great example of companion planting. So now that I'm done a little bit of a tangent, I couldn't find anything that I had planted that I had the space for that would be a good companion plant for sweet potatoes. Sweet potato vines do get really big, they get really long, and they kind of take over an area. So I want to be really careful that where I plant them, I'm not allowing them to eventually take over a space and kill something I have planted. So I came up with the idea of doing a, well I didn't come up with the idea, I found it on Pinterest. And I'm modifying it to fit what I think I can do. And I'm modifying it to fit what I think I can do. So we're going to be doing sweet potato towers. And I think I have two holes that I can put these sweet potato towers in. So instead of growing the sweet potatoes flat on the ground, we're actually going to grow them up. I've never done this before, but I like this idea a lot. If this works, this would be a great way that you don't have to have a garden. You could put this on your patio, put this in your backyard. Um, it saves space because instead of, again, growing flat, you're growing up. So we're going to give it a shot and we're going to see what we can do. So I've ordered some landscape fabric and I went to Lowe's and I got a big roll of fencing. But the first thing we're going to do with this fencing is I need to make this fencing also be good enough for the tomatoes. So I have 50 feet and I'm hoping that's enough. I think that should be enough. We're going to run the tomato trellises first with this and then we're going to make our sweet potato towers. So real briefly, let's talk about tomato trellises. The best way to trellis tomatoes that I've never done, that I've seen that I want to do is cattle panels. Um, you buy cattle panels and you put them on tea stakes or um, I think they're called tea stakes. And you grow up the tomato or the tomato grows up the cattle panel. I've always wanted cattle panels. Um, about two years ago, I finally had a way, I never had a way to get them home, and the delivery fee was always going to be like $30, and I'm like, I'm just not paying $30 for like a $20 cattle panel. So probably about two years ago, I finally had a truck and trailer that I could go get these cattle panels and bring them home. I went to buy the cattle panels, and the only ones the store had were beat up, were cut, were not good enough, and they weren't even going to give me a discount on them. I'm like, if you can like cut off like 79%, <laughs> they weren't even going to give me a discount, and these cattle panels were all but basically useless so I didn't get them um, I spent a lot of time looking at all the different stores around here and to be honest I couldn't find any full cattle panels I don't know what I'm doing wrong I have seen people in my area that have cattle panels and I want to desperately be like where did you get that 
but I, I don't know them and I think that would be weird. So I can't get cattle panels and I think that would be the way to go. Tomato cages, I've used, I despise tomato cages and I will never use tomato cages again. I think they are worthless, I think they are cheap. I hate tomato cages. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. Um, so I will not be doing them. So what we're gonna try to do is we have this fence in. This is, I don't even know, animal enclosure fence in. It has big squares in it. So we're gonna try, so we're gonna try to use this fence in today as our trellis, as our cattle panel. Um, I have since found cattle panels back at the store I was going to buy them at originally, and they're like almost triple the price of what they were two years ago. So I'm not, I'm just not doing that. <laughs> I will wait. So we're going to see if we can get this to work. So this is, I think, going to be a quick and easy task. I'm just going to run this down the length of my tomatoes. So I have four rows of tomatoes. I'm going to run them down all four rows. And then as the tomatoes grow, you can just kind of clip or tie the tomatoes up the fence. How I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to start because it makes me giggle every time I do this now. I compare everything to the size of my head and we're going to do that again. We're actually going to compare this to the size of my body. See how big it is? This is 24 inches, so it's only two feet high. Oh, that kind of sucks. Well, it'll be what it'll be. So because it's only two feet high, what we're going to do, oopsie, I'm stuck. What we're going to do is I'm going to actually start it about a foot, foot and a half off the ground. I'm going to let these tomatoes get tall, taller, before I start the trellis in. And that's going to be a way that I can have this trellis go higher. So if I start the trellis at a foot off the ground, the trellis would be three feet tall. Tomatoes get taller than that? Yes. Um, once the tomatoes get taller than the, than the, three, foot, than the three foot trellis, um, that's a future Caitlin problem and we're not going to worry about that today. If I had more trellis, more fence in, I could potentially put a second layer, but I'll be honest, let's talk about it. I am cheap. I'm not just cheap, I am broke. <laughs> it's not a matter that I am cheap, it's a matter that I am broke. And um, I realized that, and I've had this discussion before, I realized that this garden saves me so much money because I grow so much with my own food. However, I still have all the money to spend on all the things. So to get the fence that would have been perfect for this was about $100. And this was 24 so I'm up with the $24 and it's gonna be okay okay so I'm gonna stop yip yapping and we're gonna go ahead and get started so I'm just gonna get my fence and open And my father told me my pliers were wire cutters. We will see if he was telling the truth. Let's go over to the tomato patch. So right off the bat, I can say that I messed these trellises up. I'm going to make them work for this year, but be smarter than me. I put each one of my t-posts, so all of those t-posts that you see, there is a tomato directly in front of it. Um, for some stupid reason, I thought that was okay. But the problem is, so if you're talking about, if you look at the tomato that's right there where I am currently, the right side of that tomato will have support but the left side will not. So I can't believe I didn't think that through these these trellises needed to be longer to support the entire tomato on each side, but I screwed that up. One project done. Now, super potato tower. And it's not actually only that hot out here. I think it's probably like 
60, 65 degrees, but in the sun, I am dying right now. And I don't think my wire cutters are necessarily bad. I don't think they're the best, but I don't think they're bad. But this has like a plastic coating on it that it's struggling to break through. So maybe that's why. I'm doing a lot of arm wiggling <laughs> and, then it, and then it broke. By the end, I gotten a little better at it. My hand is not happy. My hand is starting to cramp a little bit, but we got it done. That took us probably about half an hour for those four trellises. I will need to go get um, taller T posts at some point, but for now, for now it'll work. So what I'm going to do with this, the stuff I'm doing with this, is I'm just going to make, let me come over here. I'm just going to make a circle for my power. A bird thought I was a friend. That just made my day. Okay. So I have a circle. Now I'm just going to zip tie them together to make my tower. It would be helpful if you had two people. That would be easier. Okay, come on, Jose. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. There we go. It's the start of one tower. So I'm going to do another one just like this. I'm only making two towers today because my hand is tired and now I have an attitude toward the wire cutters. But that's okay. Tube is going to be just fine. I also think I might melt before we're done. Luckily we're almost done. This, I don't think it's going to take long at all. So we have our two, I'm going to cut these zip ties, we have two towers. Now obviously you buy taller fins and you could have taller towers. I, like I said, went cheap. And I honestly do think these can be cute, cute little queen size barrels. I think that'll be a good amount of potatoes. And I have 25 sweet potatoes left. I'm not going to fit 25 in here. Come on. Nothing wants to cut for me today. Come on, cut. Jeez. <sighs> um, I have more fencing. So I will probably do more barrels this weekend. I just... I don't care about doing any more right now. I need either new wire cutters a wire cutter operator because I am done. <laughs> okay, so I ordered landscape fabric off of Amazon. Now we just want to cover the inside with landscape fabric and that will just hold the dirt inside. So this I got on Amazon. I think I paid Thirteen dollars for this, I think. I got like, a small piece, so you don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna drink up. Start by cutting your fabric to length for inside the barrel. Trying to unfold this landscape fabric, I definitely thought that I was fighting for my life or I felt like I was fighting for my life. It was so big, I couldn't get it all rolled out. I didn't know where to start with it, but finally we figured it out. 
and I just tucked it into the barrel. And I will say, um, when I watered the first barrel, I didn't zip tie the whole barrel. I just zip tied the top and the bottom. So it actually, when I watered the sweet potatoes really well, it actually allowed the sweet potato barrel to kind of pop open at the seam. So I've gone back and forth on this. Um, do I think that's a problem? I honestly don't. It's still holding soil. And my thought was as the potatoes grow, maybe having that exit will allow the potatoes kind of push out dirt to allow the potatoes room to grow. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's an experiment and we're going to try it. And the worst that happens is I don't get any sweet potatoes. The best that happens is I get sweet potatoes. I feel like I'm making a trash can. So I didn't close off the bottom of these barrels. I thought maybe, and you'll see, I plant them kind of all around the barrel. I thought by leaving them the bottom open, maybe some of the potatoes could actually go into the real ground soil. So I thought maybe that would be okay. Again, I'm doing an experiment. I don't really know, but I didn't think I needed to cover the bottom. So then once I got the dirt in here, I just cut a few holes around the barrel in order to plant the vines kind of both on top and then around. Okay, we have one done. So that one barrel took all the soil that I bought. I bought four 40 pound bags of soil and it took all four. So I have the second one sitting over here, but we need to get some more soil for it. And this took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can put seven sweet potato plants in this barrel um the tricky part is you want to maximize your growing space but you don't want to crowd them obviously the potatoes grow inside the bag so i want to make sure that i'm leaving them enough space so they can grow without being um kind of stunted by other potatoes so there's really no way to know that other than just trial and error and i kind of try to space them so that they were like like i have two on the bottom I have two in the middle, three in the middle, and then I have three on top. So I try to kind of space them on kind of different levels, hoping that um, they don't get crowded. And then I didn't um, fill in the bottom. I didn't put landscape fabric on the bottom. So the bottom, technically there's two plants on the bottom, could actually grow into the dirt in the ground because I didn't cover it. But that is a sweet potato barrel. So I do need to fertilize it. I need to finish the rest of them. I still have... Um, about 14 sweet potatoes left uh, but that is going to be a project for a different day because i'm out of soil so thank you guys for joining me so much stay tuned as these grow hopefully they're successful i don't know why they wouldn't be but i'm excited to see the harvest that comes out of these barrels i'll see you guys in the next video bye friends